Hello and welcome to the Tech Lunch Podcast, where we encourage our listeners to learn something new about tech every week. This can range from learning about new and exciting te- applications to the advancements in coding and technology. If you are always learning, you will always be a step above the rest. Take the time during lunch or during a break to listen and learn, kind of like a lunch and learn, but for the years. This podcast will open the listeners' ears to new and exciting technologies they may have not been purviewed to in the past. These topics will range from manufacturing technologies to data collection technologies and everything in between. Hello, I'm Nick. Hello, I'm Ed. And this week we're going to kind of talk about something a little different. We're going to talk about, you know, train or be trained. You know, um, we're, we're looking at it from the standpoint of either A, get training, or B, be the one giving the training. You know, we look into the industry right now, you know, either be IT, OT, or, you know, whatever industry you're in, you know, logistics, warehousing, whatnot, where, you know, from a systematic standpoint, you know, getting training or giving somebody training on a new application like MQTT, Industry 4.0 techniques and stuff like that can be beneficial not just to you but to the organization. And, you know, that is is one of those things that, you know, with, you know, knowledge breeds power but also helps people, you know, reduce their workload. So, you know, and when we're talking about like, you know, training and, you know, getting training and giving training and stuff like that, you know, what, what do you kind of think about when we're talking about that? Well, what comes to my mind is uh, if you're the person training, then you should lay down the breadcrumbs for the person to follow. And if you're the person that's being trained, you should uh, follow the breadcrumbs and see where they go. And not just follow them on the path. You should follow them on the path and explore a little bit off the path. Um, you can't just take uh, material and consume it and not explore it. Uh, you you should uh, question why did this work this way. You should question, well, what happens if this happens? And then the person doing the trainer should say, "Hey, I'm glad you asked that. This is why this works this way. This is why." This happens that way. And I think that's probably a good first step for uh, whether it be the trainer or whether it be trained. Yeah, you know, I 100% agree with that. And the thing is, it's like, you know, that type of mindset needs to be a long-term effect. You know, we need to go from, you know, worrying about, you know, hey, cool, I did this training once, I did it for a week, and I've never touched it again. You know, it needs to be, you know, formal training. It needs to be... You know, even if, you know, but if you're training yourself, you know, you know, a little bit of informal stuff works as long as you follow up on it, you know, where you're con- continuously learning, you know, you're not, you know, le- leaving yourself alone. But if you're the one giving the training, you know, going out and checking on the people that you've trained, you know, being there with them, answering their questions for the long haul, because it may take, you know, a couple weeks, maybe a month or so for it all to set in, for it to become commonplace. You know, it takes so many times before something becomes a habit. And I think that, you know, checking on people, making sure that the training went well, making sure it clicked, answering follow-on questions, because as they're doing it, they're going to come up with questions. You know, it's just, you know, one of those things that, you know, we have to be able to, you know, move into the follow-on world. I think that's kind of what's missing, you know, these days, because, you know, as, you know, Eddie could probably agree with me, you know, we've gone through a lot of training in our careers, but... You know, there's never one time where you're sitting at the end of it going, I know everything. You know, I'll never be able to, you know, ask a question a day again in my life. And uh, the, the big thing that I want to um, just follow up with Nick said, if you are, if you are the trainer, there, there needs to be knowledge checks. So we, we should verify the person understand what we're saying. We should take highly complex concepts and break them down into small steps. We should give them nibbles. And from those nibbles, they can take bites. And then from that, they can build on those things. We should also talk in a... uh, We shouldn't use jargon without explaining the jargon. 
Right. We shouldn't assume that a person knows uh, what something is. The acronyms. You know, we shouldn't assume that a person already has been exposed to certain concepts or or a person uh, has uh, five years or six years or a person has taken a computer all the way down to a, to a bare metal system and redone everything on the computer and uh, rebuilt it from nothing to something. And uh, these type of things you, you have to think about when you're training a person. And you have to be patient. You have to be patient. Yeah, you know, patience is key. You know, I know that, you know, this day and age, everybody's, you know, getting more and more, you know, short term. You know, some people are leaving the company before they're, they're ready and stuff like that. However, you know, I know that it increases the workload on everybody else, which there induces stress, there there reduces patience. You know, that that's something that, you know, we, we can't be, you know, faulted for. You know, that's it's how humans work, and it's just kind of what things, how things go. However, you know, in the same process, you know, while you're giving training, you need to be getting training. Um, and that could be as easy as, you know, hopping on, you know, different websites and stuff like that and kind of learning something. You know, hopping on YouTube and watching, you know, some of the some of the great creators that are out there. You know, hopping on, you know, um, you know, different things. You know, downloading software. You know, for example, when we want to, you know, jump into the world of like virtual machines and virtualization. You know, you kind of want to jump into the world of, you know, VMware Player and uh, VirtualBox. You know, from Oracle. You know, but with that, you know, then you can start playing with different versions of, you know, the. Uh, Linux distros because they're free. You know, why not use free to better who you are? You know, understand what Linux is because Linux is not going away. You know, if you're a Mac user, you know, you saw the same thing, you know, but if you want to learn Windows, boot camp your machine with Windows and learn Windows. You know, it's, it's one of those things. Become more well-rounded. You know, and then we go from there. We kind of use that, you know, the gateway drug you know, we, you know, of you know, VMware and uh, VirtualBox and everything, and move into the world of Docker's and containers. You know, plan with Docker Desktop and stuff like that. Learning how Docker works. You know, being on the Docker website. You know, you have Docker is their Docker Hub, for instance. You can download so many free applications on Docker Hub. Just to learn it, you can learn, you know, Oracle databasing. You can order. You can learn. You know, different types of operating systems, all from downloading a Docker, and it doesn't weigh very heavy on your system. You know, it's a great way to get into, like, the Industry 4.0 and, you know, jumping into different MQTT environments and stuff like that to play with. You know, use it as a gateway drug. You know, get addicted to learning, get addicted to having fun with it. You know, buy an old janky computer. I know me and Ed both have done it, and, you know, load it with whatever the heck you feel like it. You know, I'm not saying go out and, you know, start getting yourselves involved in, in Wildfly. You know, from uh, Red Hat, um, you know, to learn that. Which, if you want to learn that and learn that version of, you know, Java Virtual Machines, go right ahead and be my guest. You know, and if you want to do that, that'll dig you deeper and deeper and deeper into a project, you know, to play with. But, you know, that's if you want to do it. You know, and if you want to learn, like, PLCs from the OT side, you have the Open PLC program. You know, learn that, that, that type of equipment, that gear, you know, to, you know, better what you know and, you know, your environment. So, but, you know, I kind of turn the floor over to Ed because I think he's got a few ideas, you know, that can help benefit people who want to get training instead of being the trainer. And uh, just just another example of how you can um, teach yourself. So sometimes the ones that want to be taught need to be the ones that's going to be teaching. And what, what I mean by that is, is everybody's familiar with streaming services. Everybody's familiar with coding. Purchase a Raspberry Pi and set up a media center. Uh, Google it. Go to YouTube. Uh, set up a retro gaming machine with a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can set up a Minecraft game server. It, it's, it's several things that you can do. Uh, you can use an Arduino to control a robot arm. You can use an Arduino to set up um, smart mirrors. Uh, you can use an Arduino to... Automate your irrigation system for a small uh, tomato yep. plant. Uh, <clears throat> but the point is, is you have to you have to be excited for a magician to become a magician. 
he had to practice thousands and thousands of hours. And he doesn't practice thousands and thousands of hours because he have to. It's because he want to. If you want to learn, you have to want to. It has to be in you. It has to be some urge that I, I can't go without learning. And uh, for, the, for the folks that are like myself and Nick that want to teach, we teach because we want to pass on the, the, the lessons we learned to other people. We want to make the path to where we got easier for the person and they don't have to go through the growing pains we went through. Uh, I'm a firm believer in why does a person have to relearn something that everybody knows when I can give that person that information? Yep. Why, that's what GPS is. Why do I have to give you a map and you got to go through and find all these landmarks when I can just give you GPS yeah, no and you can go right to the point to learn? Yeah, no need for an atlas. You know, it's like, you know, the one thing that, you know, kind of brings me joy in my day is my asking questions. You know, somebody who wants to learn something about the systems and stuff that I'm involved in, you know, somebody who wants to, you know, pick my brain and get ideas. Or sometimes when, you know, I say something and it gives somebody an aha moment. You know, for example, you know, I work with somebody who's really into 3D printing, you know, and but slowly but surely getting into the engineering world. You know, great dude. Um, and we got him kind of, you know, got him kind of hooked on, you know, 3D printing a robot arm, you know, which is something that, you know, later on in the, the world of, you know, tech at lunch and, you know, Vulcanara, we will do and, you know, play with it and bring everybody along for the ride. You know, um, that's something that's, you know, going to come later, you know, something that we can have some fun with, you know, um, you know, just something to annoy the neighbors. Um, but, you know, when you think about it, you know, be the inquisitive type. You know, there's never been somebody who says, hey, guess what? I learned this because I wasn't inquisitive. You know, I understand that people, you know, watch, you know, YouTube or, you know, other type of, you know, material, you know, for the laughs and the jokes and stuff like that. But also use it to learn something. You got people on there who are willing to teach you. You know, they teach you for free. You know, and then, you know, you kind of segue into things like, you know, I, you know, Udemy and, um, uh, and Skillshare and, you know, all those other things, you know, and the different platforms that you can go learn on, you know, but that also doesn't, you know, leads you to the fact that once you can learn it, then you can go get certified in it. You can move up in the company and stuff like that. For example, you know, with VMware, you can go do the VMware associate, the um, uh, associate, you know, certification, you know, and, you know, little time and, you know, really kind of, you know, build, build your career in virtualization from there. And uh, <clears throat> everybody know knows what the, the web is, but everybody not, may not know what's behind the web. So the basic thing that is behind the web is HTML. You would, maybe you'd be surprised or maybe you're shocked that if you have Notepad, you have a HTML editor. Yeah. You can type in a few simple commands, and HTML is not a programming language, it's a markup language. Uh, and you can use some CSS to do some... Um, I would say put the bow on the present. But if you take things like, hey, I want to know how this works, and you you look take HTML and do a simple HTML file and look at it and say, oh, well, that's how a web page works. And that can be done right on your PC with no additional software. Yeah. Now, the funny part is, you know, to age us a little bit, I guess you can say, you know, remember back when you had MySpace? Remember changing the um, uh, the background, stuff like that? Guess what you're doing? CSS. You're playing with CSS, you're playing with HTML. You know, God forbid that ages us because we knew when it came out. You know, now you have kids who have no clue what MySpace is or how big, how popular right. it was before the world of Facebook. And just think, you know, MySpace was for creators, you know, changing backgrounds and stuff like that. You know, and now you got, you know, Facebook out there or now Meta, I guess you can call them. You know, doing who knows what. But still, there's still some good groups on there that, you know, help people learn. And there, there, there are places like Free Code Camp. You can go there and, and learn different things. Uh, you can Google concepts on uh, YouTube. Yeah. Uh, hey, I want to know how to do a simple Python program. Hey, I want to know how to do a simple Perl program. Hey, I want to learn how to program in C. Maybe you're ambitious. Maybe you want to learn C. And that's, that's really a good language to learn. Or C++. Well, C++ is good, but C is good because C is used for a lot of people that do um, things behind the scene, yeah. the mechanics behind the scene. So there there's still an abundance of C in most program 
especially uh, older generation programs, there's a lot of C built into that. And you can make a simple C program without a compiler. Right, exactly. Nick said it, Linux. Linux is your friend. If you want to learn how to program, learn Linux. Get your Linux box and learn Linux. Learn Vim. Get in there and do some of these commands and do things. You will be surprised what you can do with Linux. Yeah. You know, it's it's not as daunting as everybody thinks it is. You know, the thing is, you go to like, you know, W3C schools, you know, and, you know, they have a plethora of different things. It's not just HTML or CSS. You got JavaScript. You got, you know, darn near everything on there that's, you know, that you can learn and play with and really kind of get your hands around and enjoy. You know, it's SQL. You know, the thing is, if you think about it, you have um, Excel database. You have Excel on your machine. You know, if you're running Windows, you have Excel. If you have a Mac, you can get you can get Excel for, for Mac. Believe me, it's out there. Um, but you can take a Excel database and turn it into a data store for another Excel tab. And you can use SQL against it along with Visual Basic. You know, you see all these people, oh, look, you did that really fancy thing in Excel. All that is is a Visual Basic script. Just basic scripting. People have been doing scripting for years, and they didn't know they did it. And it's then, like the WYSIWYGs, you know? Yep. What you see is what you get. Exactly. Uh, and to, to, to kind of touch on one of Nick's babies, uh, learn AWS. It is free to download and play with. Get into cloud computing. Right now, one of the biggest things, that if you're a gamer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Gaming as a service. It is a real thing. This is what's happening in the future. Physical media, as far as gaming is concerned, is is not going away, but it won't be as predominant. You're going to see more games released in a digital format, and that'll be taken from the cloud, and maybe you want to put it somewhere. Maybe you want to put it in your own personal cloud. So you'll take it from a public cloud to a private cloud. Uh, And so... Look at AWS. There are abundance of things that you can learn. Uh, look at things like, um, like when Nick was talking about Excel. Well, we can go a little bit further than that. We can go to things like MySQL, which is built into a Windows platform. Yeah, access database. So, so learn databases. Learn. Maybe you want to learn AI. Python is a great thing to start with if you want to learn AI. Maybe you're interested in uh, getting an Arduino and connecting sensors to it and see how uh, the temperature is outside and make your own weather station. Yeah. These are things you can do. You know, it's like, and the other thing is, you know, kind of like when you're looking at, you know, um, Python, if you really want to learn that, you know, that's when you look at like OpenCV, you know, and, you know, stuff like that, TensorFlow, uh, packages that are for Python. To be able to do some some fun things, you know, um, like using a camera to track movements and you know, some all of your freaking um, automated, you know, AI type of material and stuff like that, so you can build it for smart glasses and whatever else you really want to do with it, you know, or you know, grab you know a Raspberry Pi and a screen or something like that, make a smart mirror with it. This really kind of just depends on you know what you want to do. But, you know, the big thing is, is if you're learning something and then take what you've learned, I'm not saying master the craft, but come down, but come close and take that and train somebody else how to do it. Pass on the knowledge that you've had the opportunity to learn to make their lives easier. You know, the thing is, even if it's not somebody you work with, pass it on to your loved ones, you know, pass it on to your kids. And get them to learn some more about, you know, tech or OT or, you know, engineering or, you know, STEM for that matter. You know, don't don't let it go by and, you know, forget that, you know, we have, you know, STEM programs in a lot of high schools now. And, you know, that is something that needs to be pushed. And uh, then another thing, you know, we were we were talking about um, Windows, learn APIs. Yeah. I mean, I. When I say learn it, dabble in it. You you have to play with things and understand how things work. Like 
<clears throat> before somebody could make a, a watch, they had to understand mechanics. And then they not only had to understand mechanics, they had to understand physics. And not only did they have to understand physics, they had to understand how do I take something the size of the, a Ben Tower and make it the size of a wristwatch. So all these things had to be learned over time. Right. No one just said, oh, all these things go together. So learn how to decompile technology. Learn how to break a big piece into a small piece. Learn how to get on an atomic level when you're learning. Right, exactly. You know, why, but now you, talk, you, you hit on it, you know, APIs. Why use APIs when you can, you know, learn to Django? That's a, pro, a product of Python and make your own API and start building your own applications with it. You know, if it gives you an idea, like, you know, what stuff you can do around your house, just by, you know, knowing a little bit of basic, you know, knowledge here. I've built a um, screen that runs in my garage. It tells me what the traffic is to work. It tells me what the weather is for that day. And kind of, you know, it gives me a little bit of the news. It tells me what's going on. So when I walk out of my out of my house, walking through my garage, I see that screen. It kind of tells me what's going on for my day. And off I go. You know, it's written in CSS. It's written in HTML and uses a little bit of API. But it makes my life easier because I don't have to worry about it. And, and you said it, Nick. If you have kids that are involved in the STEM program, uh, look at Khan Academy. Khan Academy is a great platform for any child or any adolescent or any teenager that's interested in these concepts. Uh, they do a great job of uh, making sure you understand before you move to the next step. And that's the biggest thing in learning. Don't just go try to learn everything in a day. I mean, unless you have an IQ over 200, you are not going to learn everything by looking at it once. Most humans are not at a level like that. You have to be able to look at a problem, and I, I'm going to keep saying, break that or uh, decompile or uh, destruct that problem down to a, an atomic level so you understand each piece of that part that's working with that problem. You don't want to just go and, and do not, do not do regurgitation. Do not do YouTube, watch YouTube videos forever and think you're a programmer. You have to do projects. Projects, projects, and projects. And you're going to fail. And that is great. That's the greatest thing in the world to fail. Because you will remember it and you will not, it will not sit well with you. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that kind of leads us on to, you know, some, some things that are, I guess you could say, you know, coming up and you know, in our world, you know, as far as the tech at lunch world, the Volcanara Technology Solutions world, you know, we're going to start moving our way, maybe not soon, uh, eventually, you know, we've never been known to be the ones that jump off the cliff just because it's fun. Um, you know, we're moving into, you know, YouTube and um, into Skillshare and Udemy and stuff like that to help bring, you know, the training material to life, you know, to help people out. And kind of, you know, with that, you know, with the YouTube thing, you might see a few little surprises, you know, a couple challenges, a couple giveaways, you know, a, a couple of us, you know, having fun, joking around, um, getting everybody to learn something, you know, getting y'all involved with us. And, you know, we want to see what y'all can do. And that's, you know, I think what's going to be, you know, announced later. But, you know, be prepared. We want to see what you can do. And, uh, you know, we want to be part of your, your learning journey. So, you know, I'm going to turn over the last few minutes over to Ed and, uh, I'll let him, uh, lead us out on, you know, on that end note. So <clears throat> to me and Nick, we are all a community and you guys are in our community. We want to, uh, do things such as Twitch and we definitely want to do a live, uh, stream with you guys. We want to get reaction. We want to get ideas. We want to know what you guys are interested in. Please leave us any type of comment. Tell us what we can do better. Uh, give us some ideas of what you want to hear. Uh, we are really open to any ideas. And uh, we really appreciate all the support that we've been getting. And uh, from me, myself, and Nick, 
that's we would like to say thank you. Thank you for listening to the Tech at Lunch podcast, where we hope you learned something about tech during your break or during your lunchtime. If you did, please give us a follow to prevent missing future episodes. If you have any ideas or something you want to hear or learn about, please send us a show idea to podcast at vulcanora.com. Hope you have a good rest of the day and continue learning.